All right, so they do have one of the first giant indoor water parks here in Grand Prairie, which is right here next to the police, Grand Prairie Fire and Police Department. But that's actually called Epic. It's called The Epic. I've been inside there several times. My kids just swim in there. Highly recommend it. It's very, very pretty. Uh, there is one room that's kind of like tropical. So it's like a tropical... Um, forest it's just very you go in there and start sweating like you're in a tropical forest but it's pretty cool it's pretty cool i definitely 100 percent check it out it's called the epic all right so they do have one of the first giant indoor water parks here in grand prairie which is right here next to the police grand prairie fire and police department but that's actually called epic it's called the epic i've been inside there several times my kids just swim in there highly recommend it it's very very pretty uh, there is one room that's kind of like tropical, so it's like a tropical um, forest. It, it's just very, you go in there and start sweating like you're in a tropical forest, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'd definitely 100% check it out. It's called the Epic. One place you don't see a lot of is A&W right next to Salon John Silver's. It is all American food. Once in a while, it's nice to have these little little pieces of chocolate that they sell at QT. Um, 69 cents for some chocolate. I think it's pretty good. at the 2019 Kia Forte uh, I don't even know what to call it whatever this is dashboard whatever now on your dashboard you can see quite a bit on this page this is driver info or drive info you got let's say 106 miles okay on the I mean you got 106 miles left in the tank there you got well, if you put more gas in there, it's going to be more. If you do the whole nine gallons, it's going to say way more. But I only have that many gallons on it. And that's to the Q. That's to the. That's exactly correct. So if you put more gas, it'll be like 250 miles or 300 miles or whatever the amount of gas. I, I have to fill it all the way up to see the amount on the most. Driver info underneath, you've got your mileage on your trip charge. Now, if you want to change your trip charge, you just do one little button up this way and you can see that it'll change to your trip info okay the trip info matches almost exactly because I've reset both of them and that's accumulated info and that's your first page which is trip A and that's ideally trip B it doesn't say trip B but that's what it means your average on your gas mileage and under that you have a timer okay so you can reset that timer I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Reset timer on this one. And then you have a timer that goes off right there, okay? Now we're gonna switch this again, but I wanna show you something that can get confusing, okay? Um, now when you switch these, you can see it's on eco, okay? I can change these things by hitting this button right back down here, which is gonna be normal, sport, smart normal sport and smart I got it on smart okay it'll say smart right there all right now that right there when you click it 
that shows just the uh, miles per hour. Click it again. It's going to show this again. Now let's say you want to see other options. That's your page. That's a tricky one. So the page looks like that. Boom. That's where it'll say system off. And it'll also say driver assistance, which you can only activate and park. So if you were to hit it like that, it would say shift to park for settings. And since we're riding right now, you can't really do that. So when you switch it like that, it'll just say, and it'll keep, it'll keep saying shift to park. How you get out of that is you just hit the top one right here and it'll go back. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I was gonna show you something. See if I can show you. Okay, now look right here above system off. See where it says the road? Okay. That's basically the reason why it says system off is because this button right here is going to be your. Right here. See it? Right here. That's going to be your lane reminder. I'm going to activate it. Okay. As for people that get kind of sleepy or whatever, you hit it just like that, and now it's activated. It's called lane departure, okay? Now I want you to look above lane departure. See that middle one right here? Where it says 105 miles? Watch this. See the middle one? Watch what happens when I hit it again, right here. I hit it again, now look where it goes. It goes back to lane departure, okay? Now, what I want, I want you to show you something, okay? When I hit this again, I'm going to hit it. I'm going to hit it once. Boom. This says lane departure. Hit it again. See how it goes to the other side right over here? You can't see it because it says 105 miles. But watch when I hit this again right here. Okay? It goes back to lane departure, which is on. Okay? I'm going to show you something. Look at the top where it says 105 miles. Now watch. When I hit this, I'm going to keep hitting it so you can see it. So it'll activate. It's going to go to three different levels. It's going to go to the middle. It's going to be for settings. You can only uh, activate under shift. I have to keep, keep hitting it so you can understand it. It goes to the right. It goes over to the left. That's what I wanted to get at. That's where you can do your trip charge. Okay? So you just keep touching it at the top so you can keep up with it go to the left, it goes to the middle, it goes to the right. It goes to the left, it goes to the middle, it goes to the right. It goes to the left, it goes to the middle, it goes to the right. It goes to the left, okay? That's a lane departure right here. See where it says lane departure? So if your, blink if your blinker's on, it's not gonna do anything. Let's try it, let's see what happens on lane departure when your blinker's not on. It's gonna remind you. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off. So it says system off, okay? Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the three levels. It goes to the left, it goes to the middle, it goes to the right. It goes to the left, it goes to the middle, it goes to the right. That's settings, you can only do parking. So when you're in park, you can only go to the left, go to the middle, and go to the right, okay? That's only whenever you're in park can you activate that. And you can do all kinds of things. You can you can activate the, the, the doors differently, door assistance, all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna show you the different stuff you can do. You can only do it through shift and park, okay? Go to the left, go to the middle, go to the right, okay? Now, we're gonna go to the left. We're gonna keep it to the left. You can only activate those things by activating your page, which is up here, okay? You gotta be, you gotta be aware of that right there, okay? got to be aware of it. All right? All right. So I just wanted to show you that. That's the page right there. See it? It's right there. That's the one you want to activate first rather than this button because you'll get stuck on it if you don't. I'm going to show you an example. Let's say it was activated on system off and it looks like that and you're moving it like that. You can see tire pressure, things like that, but you can't see your trip charge or your, your chip, your trip uh, activation. Do you see what I'm saying? You can't see it because you're sitting there going, well, why won't it switch over? It doesn't, it doesn't switch over like that. It only switches over on your page up here. 
So when you hit this, it'll go to the left, it'll go to the uh, right, it'll go to the, all the way to the left, it'll go to the right, see it goes to the left, it goes to the middle, it goes to the right. It goes to the right, it goes to the left, it goes to the middle, it goes to the right. It goes to the left, it goes to the middle, and it goes to the right. Look, at the, look above it. It goes to the left, it goes to the middle, it goes to the right. Look again. It goes to the left, it goes to the middle, it goes to the right. Look again. Left, middle, and right. See? Let's look at the middle one. The middle one is the lane. It's gonna show the tire pressure. It's gonna show system on or off on um, lane, uh, let's see what it's called again. It's called lane departure, okay? Lane departure's on, lane departure's off. I wanna show you right here. It's in the middle, that's system off. In the middle, it shows just the tire pressure only. Do you see the difference? Do you see the difference? Look at the difference. Look at the difference, okay? Look at the difference. It just shows the tire pressure. Now I want you to show you this because this will confuse you. Right here, attention level. It'll show attention level. Look at attention level. Attention level. Okay. Hit it again. It's gonna say system off. Okay. Hit it again, and it's gonna say the tire pressure, and that's all it's gonna do. You cannot get out of that unless you hit the page. Hit the page. It'll go to driver assistance, which you cannot activate unless it's in park. Watch. Shift park to settings. So you have to be in park. You can get stuck in that if you don't know how to activate the top one. Active the top one, it'll go to the left, it'll go to the left, it'll go to the middle, it'll go to the right. It'll go to the left, it'll go to the middle, it'll go to the right. It'll go to the left. That's the one you wanna find. There's the middle, there's the right. It'll go to the left, it'll go to the middle, it'll go to the right. It'll go to the left, it'll go to the middle, it'll go to the right. Go to the left, which is that one. Okay. Now you can activate average economy. You can do drive mode eco. You can do, you can find out how fast you're going. Okay, that guy's a Pinsk. Oh boy, he's in a hurry. Uh, you can see how fast you're going here. Now, when you activate it again like this, boom. You can see the driver info. That's gonna be your most valuable page. And anything you do for delivery, if you work for Postmates, if you work for uh, DoorDash, if you work for uh, Uber Eats, if you work for any of them, let's say Lyft or whatever it may be that you work for, Uber or whatever, it could be, uh, you can work for InDrive, you've got another company called Waze, what you can do, you can work for Waze Carpool, you can, another one that you can work for is called, um, Oh, it just came out. It's called Curb. You can work for Curb. Curb's a good one. There's all different ones that you can you can sign up for. Uh, Grubhub's great. Grubhub is wonderful. You can do that as well. All those are really good to work for, okay? This is what you want to activate so you can keep up with stuff, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you an important uh, tool for this right here. Look at where it says trip, where it says 5.9 miles. I'm gonna show you something. If you wanna reset that, you don't hit page, you hit okay. I'm gonna hit okay and watch, boom. Hold it down and it resets. Now, you can do one tap to the up and hold down okay, which okay is right here. Push it down, hold it down, and it'll reset, okay? And you got both of the trip A and trip B reset. Just in case you're doing two deliveries, you can have one delivery set for A and one delivery set for B. And you know, you can keep track of these if you've got like, let's say, I don't know, you could use a journal where you write it down, which is helpful, or you can just keep it in notes and do a daily thing to email to yourself to keep track of how much mileage you're using for each individual thing. And that's gonna be very helpful in you doing delivery, transport, and any of that kind of stuff uh, if you go into ride share or whatever it is that you ended up doing. And I wanted to talk about that because I've had the most trouble with accessing that on the Kia. Now, I don't know if they're gonna change it on the newer models, but I'm gonna tell you the hardest part of dealing with it, and it's this right here. It's the page. Because in a lot of the other cars, it switches differently. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start tapping it right here, tapping it like that, and I wanna show you something. Look how it switches. It goes to the left, middle, and it goes to the right. Those are all different components that you're dealing with on monitoring the car system, okay? If you know how to work this page right here, then you won't get lost in just tapping this only, okay? It's a three thing system, one, two, and three. 
you have to know how to do this top one. If you get stuck, always go to page right here and you'll be able to get out of it, okay? I just wanted to tell you that because I've had the most trouble dealing with that, okay? It's the top page one that helps you because that'll get to the right one that you want to get to. It takes a while. You got to fool around with it a little bit to understand. to send a drone out of the window and fly one right over one of those planes that are taxiing over the bridge. Of course, they wouldn't like that, but you could probably get away with it if it was a one pass. Uh, they wouldn't know. There's one coming right there. You barely can see it though. See it way up there? There it goes. You need a telescopic to get really good stuff at the airport. But you can get really good stuff with a uh, with an iPhone. You can get decent stuff, you know, if that's all you got. But if you got a telescopic, you can get really good, nice stuff. And those are like Canons, uh, Nikons. The Canons are really good. The, G, uh, the G7 shot series. Those are really good, uh, um, very good cameras. Um, the Mark II is a very good camera for the Canon. Uh, I believe it's a, a power shot G7. And it's a Mark II. Those are really good to have and they're miniature. You want to get something kind of compact, you know, that you can carry but you can get a really good telescopic at, at this airport. It'd be a great place for a filmmaker. And I am one, so, but I'm just using a phone. But, but if I had a really good camera, I'd, I'd be tearing it up.
fair insurance is. The guy's advertising over there. I wonder if it's uh, international. It could be like a good deal, a good deal on insurance. I know insurance companies really can get out of control, but it's F A I R. I just saw it on the back of his uh, car. It said Fair Insurance. I never heard of them. Now I've heard of Geico, Progressive, and State Farm, and all those guys, and these guys up here. But uh, never heard of Fair. Funny, there's a guy out here in a, a tuxedo doing some of this stuff on the limo and everything. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> there wasn't anybody in a tuxedo. I'm just joking about that. It would be kind of crazy though. Tuxedo cabs. We all wear tuxedos. Kind of like favor. Actually, in actuality, favor doesn't even wear tuxedos. This is known as the Sandman. Uh, it's a well-known hotel in Plano and Frisco. It's a Plano and Frisco hotel, but it's a very nice little hotel right here. And these people were so nice to me. They bought me a dragon fruit drink and I asked for just a medium, but he gave me a large and I just, you know, probably one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Um, and his lady friend from Toronto. Canada um, but it was really uh, a nice experience I do highly recommend uh, these types of drinks right here they're actually from Starbucks and um, they're very very tasty uh, I believe it has like guava in it or something like that so here it is right here and like you know he was like well can I buy you a Starbucks and I was like well sure <laughs> I don't drink a lot of Starbucks but this one um, actually is one of my favorites right now so it's a dragon fruit and uh, it's some type of like frozen mixture with guava and everything. It's like the best thing ever. I'm gonna have to get a Starbucks account. Um, really good. Probably if you put a shot of vodka in it, it'd even be better, but I don't really do that stuff. But it is good though, it tastes good. Um, back in the day when I would go to Angelica movie theater, I would sometimes do secretly, no people didn't realize, but I'd do like a shot of vodka and then go in the movie theater. But I stopped doing that. Um, maybe every once in a while to celebrate, you know, if it was a really good movie that I was excited to go see, but you know, I just, I don't know. I'm not the biggest drinker, but I do like this dragon fruit stuff. It, it's, it's not alcoholic. So I just wanted to make sure you knew that, but, um, cause I don't, I don't drink, but well, rarely on a blue moon, like very, very rarely do I ever, it has something wonderful would have to happen. And I would have to celebrate with maybe a shot, but this is like really good. It's really big and, mm, just wonderful so I headed back to check on Kitty and uh, good news on Linda she's doing very very well um, like I've never seen her recover so well you know um, you know but um I you know we went by TCU and did all that kind of stuff and I'll tell you uh, why a little bit later because she's kind of secretive about some of the stuff you know because we do try to keep some privacy, even though we are on, we have our own show, um, when it comes to certain business things and stuff like that, she's told me to kind of keep on the hush hush. Um, cause I, uh, well, I kind of got involved when she was at Sprouts, you know, when she was working at Sprouts and, um, so I promised her to kind of, we could talk about where we go. But when it comes to, you know, business, we kind of keep it quiet. But also from the, the guy the guy that I helped out today, he said that IKEA, this is IKEA right here. You can kind of see where it says IKEA. IKEA has like a really good breakfast. So I didn't even know this. Because um, we vlogged, L Linda and I had actually vlogged IKEA. Um, and I said, I was like, IKEA? 
uh, uh, Kia, sorry, uh, Ikea, Ikea. And I was like, Ikea has breakfast? He's like, Ikea has like one of the best breakfasts. I didn't even know this. So we may have to go back to Ikea and vlog the breakfast because I don't really do a lot of breakfast vlogs. Anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. If you're gonna buy a car, always get it at Carvana. They'll bring it right to your doorstep. I don't know what they do with the keys though. Um, probably they may put them up here, you know, on the visor, you know, where the visor is up here. But I, I don't know. Somehow they give you the car and they drop, well, they don't give it to you, you have to buy it, but they'll drop the car at your doorstep. And I'm always wondering like, what do they do with the keys? They may mail it to you or something, I don't know. Maybe they just leave the keys in there and make sure that you pick it up and you have to sign something for it. I don't know. Like, you know, if they drop the key, the car off if you're not there. Um, probably they may only, since it's a car and it's usually more than $30,000, they probably make sure that you're there when they drop the car. I'm, I'm sure they probably do that. But that's Carvana. I don't know. You'd have to find out. They could mail you the keys or they could just, you know, you know, hope that you're there to drop off. I'd, I'd be nervous if I... You know, if I was in charge of dropping off a $30,000 vehicle and the person wasn't there, you know, but they always have trackers and stuff like that, so. Definitely gonna give this thumbs down on this particular 7-Eleven, so. Not gonna recommend this particular one. It's right over off of Glade Road. They need to do some serious talking and meetings on the bathroom. Let's see if they have a scheduled thing. Yeah, no scheduled thing on the wall. This needs to be revamped. Big time. So the telephone was first created in the eight 1776, not too long after the Civil War. Italian guy did it. I'll get his name later. I don't know if I can pronounce it, but it was created by the Italians. Um, later, it was revolutionized by a guy named Ross. Then, a guy named Alexander Graham Bell popular, popularized it, meaning he kind of revolutionized it and popularized it for America. Uh, way later. Uh, and then, it, of course, it took off by World War One, the first war, 1915 to 1917. It became very popular where almost everybody had a telephone. Or a lot of people had a telephone. Not everybody did, but I mean, well-to-do people, maybe upper middle class to rich, had telephones. And then, of course, by the 1920s, it was standard to have a telephone. But it was actually created in 1876. And that's what I'm holding right now, a telephone. And I've been making money off the telephone since 2005. I started at a company called Warren Tech, a guy named Randall San Antonio, who was also an accountant for Hollywood Film Group that made a couple of movies. A big Woody Allen fan. He actually gave me a, a copy of You'll Meet a Tall, Dark Stranger which is actually a really good uh, Woody Allen movie. I might watch it again. It's a copy of, of one. Back in those days, uh, the PS3 was launching out, PlayStation 3, and I uh, was part of a clan on SOCOM, which is Special Ops Combat. Uh, there basically is another version of what the Navy SEALs did, only they did like a computer game. SOCOM is a computer game. But it's very popularized on PS3. It's mostly for PS3. It started off uh, PS, maybe PS1 or PS2. I think PS2. I think it actually was a PS2 game known as Navy SEAL SOCOM. Um, and I played, played that almost like every night until morning when I was doing my telemarketing stuff. I'd have to be on the phones at exactly 8 o'clock, I believe, is when we started calling out. And we called nationwide. It was on an automatic dialer that was also connected to an intranet. Now they did have internet service, but they used an internal service, 
which is known as an intranet, which is a little different than the internet. And the whole place, you know, was a state-of-the-art dialing system. So it would dial out automatically and find the lead. And the person would go, hello? And you go, hi, I'm calling on behalf of Warren Tech, or I'm calling from Warren Tech, or on behalf of PC Richards and Son, whoever we were representing. We even uh, did calls for Panasonic. And made about 900 a week, which wasn't a whole lot of money. But it was enough for my, me and my first wife, who was uh, half Sicilian. We were able to, um, you know, back then in 2007, you know, it wasn't that expensive. But we were able to pretty much support ourselves. And she went to American Broadcast School. And uh, had someone that knew she knew that was on the radio. That had to forfeit their tickets to the USA Film Festival, which she gave, the, the, her friend gave it to Sarah, who was my first wife, and she decided to go to it, which was a tickets to go see Inland Empire, where that's how we met David Lynch, who actually talks about the telephone a little bit in some of his movies, um, and even the um, the record player, but the telephone is it's mentioned a little bit on his movies and stuff, and the reason I'm bringing this all around about the telephone is because... A lot of the YouTubers today use a phone or iPhone or something of that nature uh, to make a living, and uh, it's an interesting it's an interesting thing to 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 make a living as a entertainer by using the phone. Now, I want to I want to bring this over and transition to Tennessee Williams. Tennessee Williams was a great playwright. And wrote a play called Glass Menagerie where he hints at the occupation of using the telephone to make money. And his mother, Mrs. Wingfield, would call people on the telephone to register them to buy uh, magazines. And that's how she made a living and helped the family. And, of course, Tom Wingfield worked in a shoe factory and hated the neon lights. But I have a feeling, and this is just a hunch, I could be wrong. But before Tennessee Williams uh, wrote his famous play, Glass Menagerie, that did very well on Broadway. And also eventually wrote Streetcar and Desire and discovered the one and only Marlon Brando. And helped out Elia Kazan's career. Um, I have a feeling he may have worked on the telephone to make money because he was only a teacher for so long. So he taught school. I believe it was public school, uh, maybe private, but, but he probably taught, uh, taught public school. And, um, he had to make a living, uh, before he did get well, you know, before he, be, before he became very popular, uh, as a playwright. And I think he actually used the telephone uh, to, to fulfill subscriptions for magazines and things like that, you know, to make extra money. And probably a lot of people did back in the day when the telephone business was, you know, starting to boom. And people found out that they could pick up the telephone and talk into the telephone. And another person, you know, of course, would answer the telephone and there would be money exchange. You know, and that still happens even today. It's called a telemarketer. And that's what he was writing about in Glass Menagerie with his mom, uh, uh, Mrs. Wingfield. If you ever, I believe, I believe it was Amanda Wingfield. But, um, all right, something like that. It, it was Mrs. Wingfield. It was the mother of Tom Wingfield. But he does mention that. So it's a possibility that Tennessee Williams made money as a telemarketer while he was struggling as a playwright and then finally went to New York City knew that he could do it even though he, he was a crippled he, he did have a cane he did limp when he walked and probably would have had a lot of struggle being an actor but he did not fail at all as being one of America's all time greatest playwrights other than of course Arthur Miller and, and um, you know David Mamet and things like that later on um, and of course, Sam Shepard, but Tennessee Williams was, was known as one of them, you know, he's one of the most famous playwrights of all time. I just thought that was interesting. And I'm talking on the phone right now. Now, 
the one thing that I, I will be putting down is my PayPal QR. I haven't done this before. Hopefully, I can remember. Maybe I don't watch all the shows. I do lay them out. So, a lot of times, if I say, okay, QR scan here, you know, maybe. But I, I will try to remember to at least put it at the end of the show. That way, you can go up to the screen and just scan the screen. And if you want to send money to PayPal, it may be easier than having to type it in. It's called a QR, known as a quick response. I should be putting in somewhere about now, or in a little bit towards the end of the show, right after the outro where Linda dances. Well, it's more like kind of exercise dancing. She did that at a place called Main Street. Oh, I'm sorry, Main Event. Main Event. Some of them are off Main Street. Miucci, he invented the telephone in 1849. A French guy, I'll have to pronounce his name, name later, uh, a few years later developed it, and it was not patented until later. In 18, I'm going to guess 76, so I had to, uh, to get that right. That was done, it was patented by Graham Bell. So Alexander Graham Bell patented, I believe, in 1876. I'm going to double check that on the year. I could have the year wrong by a year or so. Uh, but it was invented by an Italian man in 1849. And his name was Antonio Miocci or something like that. I don't really know how to pronounce it. It's uh, Miocci or Miocci or something like that. But... Patents are very difficult because it's publication and stuff like that. So the inventor was not Antonio Graham Bell. It was done by an Italian guy. A French guy revolutionized it. And then a guy came in named Alexander Graham Bell. And then he actually uh, patented, U.S. patent. It was a United States patent in 1876, I believe. Oh, there he is. The one and only kitty. Mr. Edmund, Tuxedo Casabetes. Look at that kitty. Isn't that a special kitty? Okay. Hello, Lucy. One moment, please. Oh, you're in there? Yeah. Look at that kitty. Let's see what we got today, kitty. Okay, let's see here. Uh, how about this? Does that look good? It's pate. I know that you're not the biggest fan of pate, but I know, kitty, I know. I know how excited you get. This is known as pate signature seafood entree. Now, I'm going to see if we have uh, leftovers, too, kitty. Not that I can see. But they could be in there somewhere. You know, it makes me think in Maine when I lived there with the two cats. One of the mean mill workers told me, well, you can always eat your cats. I would never do that. I don't see how anyone could possibly ever eat a cat. I did put it, I think, in Escape from Maine, the book. Not that I did do that. I would never do that. But I would feed a cat. Okay, kitty. Jump up there all eloquently. Oh, hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Give me a kiss. Mm -hmm. I'm feeding Kitty. Should I give him half or just the whole thing? I fed him at six. Oh, you already fed him. Yeah. Well, I'm just but he, look, he's getting all excited. We'll just give him just half. We'll just do half. Um, it's kind of hard to do half, though. Well, I don't know. Just give him the whole thing. Yeah, oh, I'll give him half. He needs to learn discipline. Kitty, did you want half? But he didn't really eat much dry food. So mm, yeah, that's true. Wet food's better for him than dry food. Okay, Kitty, we're going to go with half. Sure well, you, you, half she, you think wet food's better. Wet food, some think dry is better, but I think wet food probably is well, better. Dry is like cereal. Mm -hmm, just like cereal. This is wet food, like meat. Go ahead and just put that up there and put it in there. Okay. Look at that, Kitty. Eat. He's going to knock it over if I don't put it down. 
Let's go down this way, Kitty. Right over here. Boy, that magic mesh is stringy though, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It gets really it. stringy. All right. Good night. Well, I got cat food on the phone, so we're gonna have to wash it here. Yeah, I found this in the car. Okay, it's my grandma's. This is your grandma's? Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. Thank you. Did you want to mail it off to her in Florida? Yeah, yes, we can. Okay, it's a crab. Hmm. Is that a crab? That's a crab. Okay. C-R-A-B, crab. All right. Maybe it's a handsome. It's a W-4. Um, I got you one of these right here. So it's like an Afron nasal spray or Afron. Afron is, is what they call it. Oh, so anyway, sure I'll put it right here. So, cause I know you've been sniffling. You okay, kitty? Put a tomato on it. 